we're grateful we could be here this day and we're grateful for the wonderful county that we live in and for the many blessings that we receive for being here in this place. Father, we're grateful for the good men and women that live here and work here and share their, their talents and their abilities to help grow our, our kids and to be able to help make this a better place. Father, we ask that I would please bless law enforcement and those in emergency services that they can stay out of harm's way. We're grateful for those who service in armed services over here locally and, and abroad. Please guard and protect them. Please help us to continue to, to do the things that would be best for the county and be able to do what's best for not only our, our growth, but our children's, children's growth as well. And again, we thank thee for all that we have, and we say these things only in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, you guys. Okay, uh, have you guys had a chance to look over the minutes from April 21st? I did. I would uh, make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes from April 21st, 2021. And I'm going to second that motion since Commissioner Hatfield was not there. So I've got a motion by Commissioner Scott, a second by Commissioner Summers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Administrative review, reports, future agenda items. Commissioner Scott? Uh, former agenda items, I did get a, a call from the Fine Arts Center and Susan, Susan Neidert. They're putting together the final plans for their uh, activity that they wanted to do, where they were going to use the, uh, the county grounds. And uh, one of the things that they were going to do was they were going to have a dog walk. And it was going to be, you know, right here in this area, around the block, around the neighborhood. Um, she did say that if they did that, they would have people that were in charge of... Cooper scoopers? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so we don't end up with lawn, <laughs> lawn bombs out on the uh, county courthouse grounds. We can have so, an Easter egg hunt right after. Yeah. So she said that uh, they would take care of that. Um, the, the other thing that they were wondering about was they wanted to have a, a chalk toss, and they've done these other events. Yeah, literally. And she said that once once they're done and they clean up, you can't even tell that it was there. Doesn't LeBron do that before every game? Yeah. The, have a chalk just color. not colored. Yeah. Um, My concern is residue on the sidewalk. Just You might want to call Jan because we had that chalk toss up at the fairgrounds. Yeah. It left a mess after? Yeah. So leave no mark behind it. It did? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, but it's, if they think it's not going to track, but. Well, it doesn't, no, I'll just say it. It doesn't necessarily matter what other people think. It's okay. what actually happens. And so that's what we have to. I would call Jan take and care of. ask and so, her and ask Cody. Okay. I have Maybe what I'll do is coordinate with Cody and have her talk, have him talk with Jan, and okay. get her impressions, and then we can let them know because. If, if it truly doesn't make any difference and it's part of their event, I'm fine with it. Okay. But if it's going to leave a residue behind and make a mess, I don't think we need to have that out here. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and an update on COVID? Yeah, we're, we're running a little bit higher now. We did get down to about 65 to 70 active cases in the county. We're up at about 127 uh, now as of today. Uh, which, you know, really doesn't surprise me. Uh, people are out and about, more active. Uh, the weather's good. And so y you would expect to see, you know, more people um, getting getting COVID. Having said that, the uh, percentage of folks that are vaccinated is going up, the number of people that have had it. And so we're, we're approaching that herd immunity. Uh, the orders that were, the public health orders that were at the 13 local uh, health department level, um, those have all been nuked. Uh, they're no longer in force. Uh, that took place a couple of days ago. Uh, we hit the metrics that the state was looking for as far as hospitalizations, number of active cases, uh, percentage of people vaccinated. So those are no longer in force. Uh, the mask mandates, 
are pretty much gone uh, unless you get into, you know, very, very large groups. And K through 12 schools, those are staying just um, hopefully as a protection for the kids through the end of the school year and then they're gone. So that's where we're at. Thanks. You got anything else? That's it. Commissioner Hatfield, you got anything else? I don't. Okay. And I'm good. Hey, Dave, you're two hour wait's over. Yeah, come on up. Pull a chair up to the front of the mic, though, will you? Thanks for spending the afternoon with us, too. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I would be here. And <laughs> <laughs> anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Liar. And then just pull the mic up to your and state your name and who you're with. My name is David Yor. I'm the director of School Institutional Trust Lands, and um, I am here because I've learned and understand that if I want to have harmony in the state of Utah, I talk to the county fathers because they're the ones that make the world go around, despite what the legislature may think. Uh, <laughs> you guys are the ones closest to the people, and you guys are the ones that really shoulder the, the brunt of both uh, uh, criticism and also what little praise there might be. And so um, just let me tell you a little bit about what what's Sitla's uh, thoughts are about Box Elder County is that you guys received a check or about four or five months ago for 1.6 million, I should say your school district did, right. uh, which is dispersed out to your community council people, which is probably one of the best things that's ever happened uh, to the money in Sitla because it's spent very, very uh, conservatively and um, it's made a lot of difference in the schools. Uh, if I might just be able to give you an example of uh, part two has not been made yet, but we're in the process of making it here about 10 years ago uh, in Highland High School. They started a program of which they uh, uh, hired a couple of people with our money and they started a program for the freshmen that any freshman they could tell by their grades that was starting to go awry they pulled them into the certain classes and, and really tutored them, personally tutored them. Did it their freshman and sophomore year or even higher until they got them into the group to where they were studying. A couple of those freshmen, uh, they will tell you they had juvenile records and a couple of the girls were on the verge of doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And they got them straightened out. And now some 10, 12 years later, <clears throat> we have a list of those students. We're going back after those students and show you where they are today. Hmm. One's an attorney, one's an uh, engineer, one owns a couple of car washes, a couple of the girls. Poor bugger. A couple, a couple of the girls. Sorry. Uh, they've been married, one's going back after her, her, her engineering degree. And if you start putting dollars and cents in this, I'm guessing out of those five or six kids, there would have been at least one, if not two of them, go to the state prison. Had Sitla's money not been able to have been programmed into a place to save those kids. Now, we're in the process of making that film right now, and that'll be next year's meeting to show you then and then what's taking place today. It'll be a... That's awesome. It'll be really, really special, really good. That's cool. But um, this last year, we sent out $89 million to the state, the schools throughout the state. This next year will be $93 million. Uh, there's only one, one problem is, I think last year, the organization itself only brought in about $85 million. Uh, it's kind of hard to make up the difference when oil and gas has dropped by 50% and uh, we are being weaned off of uh, <clears throat> some of our old wells have been pumping for a long time because of standards put in place by the present administration. Uh, but we're, we're, we're working hard. We're thinking out of the box. Uh, St. George has been a real <clears throat> blessing to us in that we're going to be able to put away over $35 million <coughs> in development in St. George. You know, I don't know if you've been down to the airport or out of that area through there, but um, they can't build homes fast enough. They'll get a, a, a block of homes, four or five, put the home, put the numbers in the, into a hat and have a lottery to see who gets the home, to see who pays for the home. It's, it's that, in that high of demand. California is probably the number one uh, importer. In, yeah, importer into the state of Utah. I will tell you the numbers that come out on the radio last week is that 35% of the ingrate, the 35 of the increase in the in the census, even though we were highest in the nation of 
35% of that came from, from out of state, but the biggest growth factor was in-house. Right, 66%. Yep, yep, and so. Kids having kids. We just, we just have to look at it and make it work for us. Uh, we have, <clears throat> Commissioner Scott's asked a little bit about what we have. We have 3.4 million acres of surface ground and a roughly 4.3 million of subsurface. Um, last Thursday, we just finished up the, the Utah testing training range uh, exchange after over five and a half years on that puppy. Um, it would have gone it would have gone about three months faster, but we had an organization that protested one little small part of it. Um, we closed it on Thursday, and on Saturday, we had uh, $6.9 million wired to us from Graymont because we'd already had a contract in place. Now, that two and a half months cost us over $100,000 in interest on, you know, $7 million. So it all adds up, uh, you know. We're now working on the uh, John Deagle Act or the Emory County Bill, as it's more commonly known in Utah. Right. We're hoping that we can finish that in three years. Uh, I will say that since Greg Sheehan has been the state director in the state of Utah, I can't <coughs> ask for anybody better as a partner than the state BLM office. They're working their tails off. I mean, they worked it off on UTGR to finish it up, and now we're working on Dingle. Um, time will tell as to what um, what happens on Bears Ears. Uh, it'll be somewhere around 1.9 or 2.1 million. It'll be about 130,000 to 200,000 acres that we will have to trade into uh, or take cash or whatever it might be. Here's one of our problems is that we're running into the situation where there's not a lot of ground to move into. Um, one of the things I'm comfortable about bringing was what we call a blackout map, where you have the state of Utah and all of our scattered sections around, and you say, okay, you got UTTR, black that off. You got the Indian reservations, block black that, that off. You got the John Dingle Act, block that off. You got federal lands, block that off. And when you get through about seven of those areas, seven of those categories, that we are not able to trade into one way or another, you're down to about 15% of the state of Utah that we have to work with. That's it. I mean, it's, it's very impressive how I brought it and, and put it on the screen for you. You'd see what kind of a quandary we're really in. Um, <laughs> I will tell you that we're into the UTTR testing, Utah testing training range uh, expenses of Stitla, over a million dollars. That's cash that we have put out of our pocket. For the trade. For the trade. For and surveys, for, for uh, appraisals, for staff time, for whatever else it's been. And that's mm -hmm. our share. I don't know what BLM share it is, but we put a million dollars in. So Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we were positive nine in that trade. Nine, nine, sec acres. nine sections. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we picked up, yeah. I think acreage. we picked up nine sections. We were going to lose two, and we ended up mm -hmm. because of, uh, yeah, what's their names? Well, uh, salt company. The salt company out there, those ones. That, or, no, or Compass, Compass, Compass Minerals. Compass, that's right. That's, right. that's yeah. the one that came in. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. But yeah. those are the situations facing us right now, and we're having to do some things differently, and that's why we're involved in the Northwest Quadrant. Um, I think the only mistake that I made on the Northwest Quadrant, instead of it costing us a dollar, it should have cost the dominant church in this religion, in this area, $10 million to take it off their head. <laughs> it's, a, it's a landfill and it's controversial, controversial as heck. Um, I, I don't think I've been beat up so bad in my life for such a long period of time as I have on this landfill, but we're gonna get it cleaned up and it will be a key portion of the Yellen port of uh, ingress and egress for probably 2,000 other acres with railroad and things like that. So by the time we get through, uh, we will have earned it, but it'll made a lot of money for the school kids. Um, we haven't, Stan, you know that there was a trespasser way up north here three years ago. Right. We haven't found him. We don't know where he is. Last we heard, he was still in Arizona. Um, we had a guy that was out there with a 
what do you want to say, a 60-foot disc? Yeah. That was everybody's ground up, not just ours. BLM, Sitla, states, counties, roads. Yeah. So now Steve knows about it because, yeah. Have you, you haven't seen him since then? No. no. You're welcome for chasing him off. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we appreciate all the stuff that we do with gravel pits and things in our area, too. And, and I know that we have talked before about if there's anything that we can do to trade into some values, some other things that, you know, you've been more than happy to help us do this kind of stuff with Inland Port, where we don't have to worry about owning the property and Sitla would own the property. So he's been very adamant about anything he can do Only to help the school kids. Pick up the phone yep. and call me. That's, that's all I ask. Yep. I do have one, one gripe, <laughs> and that's called, and I'll speak really plain into the microphone. There you go. Everyone hear you now. And that's the people with these side-by-sides that think they own the whole bloody earth <laughs> because they are destroying Mother Nature. Yeah. I don't care whether it's Forest Service, BLM, or our Sitla ground. They do not have respect for the ground, and they're tearing the living guts out of everything. And they think that the more mud and crap they can throw in the air with their great big cleats on the tires, the greater the person they think they are. And I would, I would encourage the sheriff, is he still back here? Yeah, chief deputy is. Don't even hesitate, write him a bloody ticket. Because they are, <clears throat> I can tell you on our tabby, on a, our tabby block out there, which is 29,000 acres, between last year and this year, he wouldn't recognize how many different roads they've just started. Hmm. I mean, they're just, it's just everything. They're just destroying everything out there. And that's one specific area. I know down in the Red Rock country, they're doing exactly the same thing. Um, we, we just have problems with people going out to the spiral jetty yeah. in their cars and tour buses and getting stuck, so, well, but. That's the only thing I would ask from my side of the equation, is yeah. this our ground or public land or whoever it is, I wouldn't even hesitate. Mm -hmm. I'd just start writing tickets. Besides that, it's good revenue for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, well, I'll tell you what, we, uh, Nucor has a um, steel post division up there and we have talked before with them to see, they have a gray tipped steel post instead of a white tip because apparently white tipped was of the original, but we have talked to them before to see if they would put um, the fluorescent orange on them. Oh. So then they can, you guys can start buying fluorescent orange and anybody else that wants to post their lands. That. that way they could just do that and pound them in and people would know that that's posted and it's private property, so. That, that would be very good. That's okay. a good idea. All right. So really, that's all the, uh, the griping I have today. Other okay. than I say, thank you very much for allowing me to come Oh, thanks for coming for two hours early. I wish I didn't know. Thank you. Yeah. So, <clears throat> whatever you can do, I mean, you we'll guys have got my number, I don't stand us. And if there's something on the line that we're not doing to hold up our share of the responsibility, pick up the phone. Okay. I will say that um, I think <clears throat> we have the best staff in the state of Utah. I think they're working extremely hard. Uh, we're down to about 65, 66. Uh, which I've raised their pay and, and doubled their workload. <laughs> so, and, but they're happy. I mean, that's good. we had people coming back from the COVID deal within a matter of a couple of weeks and some people didn't miss any work at all. Best staff and the ugliest logo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So thank you, I'll get out of your hair. Thanks Dave, have a safe thank trip you. home. Thank you, thanks for coming. Thanks Dave. Go up through Appreciate Auden it. and get to Camas, don't go through the city. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, Marla. All righty. <clears throat> C. Ben Hunsaker has been serving on the Iowa Stream Drainage Service Special Service District for over 20 years, and <clears throat> he has resigned, and we have um, been given the name of Brian Ward to take his place. He's been contacted and is willing to serve. And we have a letter here for you to sign, to send to, to ben. Mr. That's awesome. Saker, Mr. Huntsaker. Mr. Huntsaker. Giving your thanks. Well, we thank him. Those type of things are don't come with a paycheck, and people are willing to serve. And we appreciate Mr. Huntsaker doing that for so long. So I'll, I'll entertain I'll a motion. Make, I'll make a motion that we uh, 
replace C. Ben Hunsaker with Brian Ward for the uh, Iowa Stream Drainage Special Service District. I'll second that. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I know Brian well. Yep. He'll do a great job. You guys the same age? Uh huh. That's what I thought. Yep. We used to go skiing together. Good man. He's very, uh, very active landowner out there. Yep. Good man. Do you want me to sign that now or? For all three of us. sign that one. Hatfield doesn't have to sign that minutes, right? Because he wasn't here? Um, yeah, not this one. Just... But this other one, you know, you've made some corrections right. some minutes Correction. last time, so you don't need to sign this. Scott, if you want to start coming up, bub. You're good to go. Okay, we've got uh, Ordinance 530. This is a text amendment to the Box Elder County Land Use Management and Development Code. Uh, it would amend Section 2-1-050, uh, which talks about um, the uh, Land Use Authority or the Planning Commission. So uh, currently, the Planning Commission consists of seven members. Um, and as we are uh, in search of, of a new member, it was discussed at one of our planning commission meetings this spring to add two alternates so that we could uh, essentially assure that we would always have a quorum without stressing. Um, we usually don't have issue getting a quorum. There are months here and there where we have to um, really make sure that, that that is the case though. So this would kind of alleviate that. Um, the two alternate members, I'll just read what would be the pr proposed language. It says the county commission may appoint two alternate planning commission members. In the event of the absence of any regular members at any meeting, the alternate members shall serve with full rights and authority at said meeting. The appointment term vacancy and removal of an alter alternate member shall be the same as for a regular planning commission member. Uh, so this was this went to back to the Planning Commission. A public hearing was held there, um, and following the public hearing and discussion, the Planning Commission forwarded a recommendation of approval to the County Commission, and uh, yeah, now we have it before you. Okay, I don't have any comments. You guys got any comments? I don't. I think it's no, a good it's thing. there through all the discussion. I think it makes a ton of <clears> sense. <throat> so. The other nice thing is the uh, alternates could eventually end up on the planning commission. That's what I was just going to say. It's kind of like a JV. It's yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice because it kind of training. Training essentially. Yeah. Be good. I'd make a motion that we approve <clears throat> ordinance number five thirty, the uh, land use code text amendment. Second. I got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Scott. Five twenty four is a small business development center. Um, I don't know if you want to just come up and introduce yourself, and you can give the presentation to one of these guys and just state your name and kind of why you're here. And we can take a look. We'll just take a look at it because I don't think we got time to go through it. So, okay. hi guys, Jared Turner with the Small Business Development Center. So excited to be here. Appreciate uh, consideration on this. Um, Stan, I don't know if you would like me to just tell you a little bit about what we're doing or some of the yeah, kind of, it's kind of go through that. what I put together. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of accountability to you guys. So right here, I just have some of the, the numbers that we've had. If you guys recall Wendy English, sadly, when she passed away in 2019, I came on as the director uh, that fall. So these are some of the current reporting numbers. I think really what I 
I want to just kind of bring you guys attention as some of the things we've been doing specifically for COVID relief. As you guys know, the county grant helped a lot of people apply for that. Uh, not everyone who applied did get awarded, um, but we did help a lot of, and also help with a lot of people with the paycheck protection program, economic injury, uh, disaster loans, and of course, there are still a lot more loans that are coming out. Um, recently, I've also done a whole lot of webinars, specifically to help a lot of different businesses who are affected by COVID. But I think most interesting is just kind of the stories on some of the people who've been able to help out, and that's been a real opportunity to do this. Uh, I think notable here, uh, Main Street here, there's been some ongoing divisions at Main Street. I've been able to bridge those. Uh, they've jokingly given me the, the name of the Henry Kissinger of Main Street. So uh, I don't know how warranted that is, but here we are. Uh, and I'm now sitting on the board of the uh, nonprofit from Main Street to move those revitalization efforts forward. Um, one big deal is I've uh, been helping a, a, a pretty notable uh, small businessmen. They're not quite medium yet, but they're there uh, helping a key manager do a buyout of the owner who's looking to sell, and we're able to keep that ownership here in Brigham, uh, in Brigham City and Box Elder County. That's me. That's actually not allowed to tell you all the details of that one, but we're, it's about a five, six million dollar deal on that. Um, also, just bringing together uh, some smaller the manufacturers to combine some efforts here, which has been really good. Uh, Tremont businesses, we have one here that we're just helping them to, it was great to broker a deal for them, and we helped to negotiate a very favorable <coughs> exit uh, for this company up in Tremont as well, and I've been doing some webinar series. Sitting on a lot of boards, as you can see, here with, uh, within Brigham City and in the county, also on a couple boards uh, out of Bogdan as well. Uh, just really trying to be involved and just work with a lot of people here in the county. So with that, just, uh, you can see there's more details there if you want to look at them, but I'd uh, love to answer any questions. And of course, there's the issue of the funding. Appreciate you guys' support in the past, and I'm happy to answer any of the questions regarding that right now as well. Who wants to start? Anyone? Well, um, I've been a little bit, I guess, concerned about the, the funding from last year um, it sounds to me like it was overlooked or um, not followed up on or something. Anyway, um, in in looking at that, I've kind of uh, I've I've had the feeling I'd like to take a a look and readdress this, possibly, um, maybe review and go over this, uh, have some time. Uh, to go over it more before we go forward with it. I don't know how you guys feel. I actually think kind of the same thing where we're kind of looking through the whole county as a whole when it comes to economic development and things. Um, I would be un impressed that we'd do the same thing because honestly, if I knew I was missing $55,000 in my budget, I mean, we, I come from a small business background and a false um, small farming background. If I didn't have $55,000 coming in the budget to pay my bills, I think I'd have paid attention. Um, Would it be okay if I address that? Um, no, not right now. Um, it makes me nervous that the county is actually the largest supplier of, that, of those funds also. Um, so those are my concerns, and I probably echo what uh, Commissioner Hatfield is talking about. It's just the thing that I think we want to take some more time and knowing that, you know, this is kind of a rush to try to get to, and we, um, what am I trying to say? Sorry, I got COVID brain after five o'clock, but um, I think I'd like to take a longer look into this too to see if this is something that we want to spend that kind of money on. Scott, Commissioner Scott, you got anything? I know that there's some there's been some really good things happen there. I am concerned, you know, with uh, with some of the metrics, uh, some of the numbers. It looks like, um, you know, client hours, total hours, capital infusion, sales increase, have seen a pretty dramatic drop over the last, you know, year and a half. And you know, obviously, there's some things going on with uh, COVID there, but uh, you know, that does concern me. So yeah. with the uh, capital infusion. Uh that was a kind of a reporting issue. It's not something that I had collected, uh, and that was something that became 
much more aware to me. <clears throat> and just so you know, on the financial side, one of the things about it is the system runs on like a reimbursement basis. And we run on three different financial calendars. We have the county calendar, January to December, government's calendar with October to September, and the USU calendar of July to June. And it's been like trying to figure out trigonometry to make sure I understand that because it's always kind of looking at a somewhat of a deficit and sometimes, depending on the type of year, surplus and other times. So frankly, I've been on board. This is my first time in government and not fully understanding a lot of the things. So you're right, Commissioner Summers, I come too from a business background. And so it's been hard for me to kind of get a handle on that some of that stuff. Okay. Um, I don't know how you got, I can't make a motion. Well, I, I, I just, like I say, I, I'd like to make a motion that we at least take three to six months just so we can evaluate and then make sure we get this right and move forward. That's my motion. You got anything to add to that? Three to six months, I mean, disband or yeah. talk about not, to, to, not continuing? To, to disband for now and then address it here so maybe in about three to six months we could actually figure out, okay, where are we going to go with this to give us some time to figure out. With the other economic development review that's being. Right. Yeah. Thing is we can't go back with the other money. Um, and prior move, and prior budget forward. year. I, yeah. Apparently it doesn't sound like we've got a real vote of confidence here. So I've got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? I, I haven't seconded it yet. Oh, I just I wanted to did. make sure I was clarifying the motion. So, oh. Jim, can I make one comment? Sure. Uh, our funding runs out in June. So if, if WIS doesn't, uh, or something doesn't improve by the end of June, then our center will be closed down. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So the motion would be that. I think you want to take the three to six months off and just say until. Well, then, then yeah, we just have to. Well, we just have to suspend it and so we can ha take the time to readdress it. And if we have to close and then reopen, then we, that's what we do. Okay. So that would be through the end of June, take some time off, see what happens. Yeah. We have a reevaluation re of the entire. Okay. Yeah. We're, so you, you want we're us to. Evaluating a number of things. Okay. So. Well, we, we'll, our center will close yeah. by the time. So we're aware that, of that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I would I second. I want to be sure I have the motion right here. Because I'm a little confused. So basically, the motion is not to fund. Not, not to, to renew or fund. Renew or fund. Until we've. The SBDC until further notice. To, yeah. Review it. I don't want to put words in your mouth. So. OK. Uh, I would second that motion. OK. I got a motion by Commissioner Hatfield and a second by Commissioner Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. OK. Um, warrant register. Sorry, I was just a little confused. We might be getting where we need to be on time. Chrissy. Been busy. Summer hire? Sorry, it takes me a little longer to do the Sherman T. Potter. It's better than last week, though, two weeks ago. Let me 
say we'll have to end it. <laughs> Just don't tell Jen I've had my arm out of the sling that long. It actually feels so good. I'll take your picture. Even though, Send it to her. Even though it hurts so bad, it <laughs> feels so good. Let's see. So I think that one's yours. Oh, okay. I think this one's yours. And this one's yours. <laughs> well, that one's yours, then. Kelly Walker one felt like there was two. We don't need to sign these last three. That one cracks me up every time it comes through. Okay, just do it one minute. Let's date you a little bit. Yeah, just a little. Well, really no closed sessions. Seeing wow. no closed session, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Should I second? <laughs> second. We got a motion by Commissioner Scott and a second by Commissioner Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.